Hi, this is Friar Tim with the final in the series of conversations about our parish vision statement on the importance of human community. I'd also like to point out that this is a test run for our new live streaming camera capacity in the church. So Amy is checking to see how we're going to work with this and how this is going to come to you. In any case, when I and the parish council discussed the question of human community, this was the one that caused the longest amount of discussion and the longest amount of trying to understand exactly what it is that we're talking about. Because there are some people that think that community only makes sense if it's got the word Christian in front of it. That is, that community really only matters if it has a specifically evangelical or gospel approach to it. I come out of a slightly different tradition. In chapter 12 of the Rule of the Franciscans, which dates back to Francis of Assisi in 1223, the last chapter talks about the friars going among the, quote, Saracens and other infidels, that is, going among non-Christians. And it points out that the friars go first to live in a Christian manner, that is, to live in fraternity, to live a certain level of human love, human respect, human care, human kindness, to demonstrate, frankly, a decent, solid humanism before people. And then, the rule tells us, if it seems so opportune, then preach the gospel. This is the basis of that somewhat hackneyed saying that is attributed to St. Francis, which there is no real quote for it, that preach the gospel, use words as necessary. That is, for us, the value of human relationship, the value of listening to one another, the value of accepting one another, the value of sharing myself with another human being in my human capacity is already a value in itself. Because as Genesis tells us, God did not make us to be alone. We were made for human community. And again, in fact, if we are created in the image and likeness of God, we are created in the image and likeness of God who is by definition community, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So whenever we gather together, even if it's for something completely non-churchy, like a cup of coffee, like meeting people in Harris Teeter and having conversations with them, like simply welcoming and being kind to people, and particularly when we make a concerted effort to remain in some full sort of association or community or group that is a sustained way for people to come together, Already, somehow, human dignity is being fostered, God's kingdom is being proclaimed, and the image and likeness of God is burnished and shined for people to see all the more regularly. This is such an important concept. And I gently challenged the parish council to say, you know, in our culture that's so values and underlines individualism, individuality, and being alone, the challenge of committing ourselves to a group is a major challenge. A number of years back, one of my favorite sociologists of religion and public life in the United States, Robert Putnam, published a very I think, groundbreaking book entitled Bowling Alone. And his thesis is a very simple one. That is, while many people bowl regularly, less and less people bowl in regular leagues. 
which means less and less people are committed to seeing the same group of 20 people every Friday night at 8 p.m. So that invitation to community, that invitation to being present for one another and having a group of people present to me, that capacity for some stable, even though rather loose association with other people, is simply given away for the preference to bowl when I want, how I want, with whom I want, and the preference, if I choose to not to bowl, to not bowl. That's a major issue in our country. A number of psychologists have pointed out that we live almost in anonymity and in aloneness. Many people, if they had an emergency in the middle of the night, if you take away their family and you ask them, name me three people that you could call, that you could trust would drop everything and come and take care of you, that is, your own small little community, most people would find it difficult to name one, much less three. And unfortunately, modern day social media, while in some ways expanding the capacity of people to connect with one another, one of the problems of social media is that I can like or dislike, friend or unfriend you whenever I feel like it. If I don't want to listen to you, I simply shut you off or shut you down which is not quite so easy to do with all the other members of your bowling league every Friday night at 8 p.m. Moreover, moreover, the situation of the last 11 months has left many of us much more lonely, much more alone, much more disattached disentangled from relationships with other people. And yes, Zoom and FaceTime can provide a good amount of that, but not all of it. The whole question of simply coming together is a vital part of what it means to be human. And I would add next one other piece of this for our own life as Christians. Newman has a series of small faith groups. A small faith group is essentially a fairly sustained, fairly stable group of people, 6, 8, 10, 12, 15, who come together to share faith. Most of us as adults grow in our faith when we rub our faith off on other people and we allow other people's ideas and thoughts to sand down, to rub down our own rough edges. Certainly we can do this one-on-one -on -one with a spiritual director or with a confessor, but works, what works best for most adults is doing this in a small faith group format. So as we're approaching Lent, I would ask you to consider how much do you really sense that you belong to the group of Newman? Or is the group merely some vaguely smiling people that you nod to on a given Sunday morning, but really don't know much about who they are? I remember distinctly the first week we were back celebrating Eucharist together in the middle of May. Many of you telling me, I miss communion, and I miss community. And I gently responded back to you, do you sense that both of those have the same root? And do you sense that both of them have the same source, who is Jesus Christ? Thank you very much for your attention.